All right, so today we're gonna to create the base of a system for our bombs, where if we make a match of four, like right here, I've got these four, um, we have a system that recognizes or recognizes that we had a match of four there. So um, let's dive right into it. Hey there, so where we left off last time, we have our slime system here where if we make a match next to the one, or next to a slime, it goes away. If we make a match not next to a slime, then a new one generates. So what we're gonna start with today is uh, creating a nice little bomb system. Today we're gonna get the, the bases of it down, and then from there, next time we'll start adding different types of bombs. So let's, uh, let's dive right in. So the first thing I want to look at is in my main scene here, my game window scene, I want to look at the grid script. I'll open this up. Uh, I have most everything collapsed already uh, because we're, we got quite a few little methods here that we're working with, but honestly not that much code. So it's pretty cool that we've gotten so much done so far. Um, so what I want to do here is I want to be able to keep track of what matches are currently on the board where they are, uh, what row and column they're in, and what color they are, so that I can tell if there are other matches that are in the same row, same column, and have the same color. So uh, what I'm going to do here is, let's see, I'll do this probably with my pieces here. I'm going to make a new little array. I'm going to call this uh, current matches. And this is going to be equal to an empty array for now. So with my current matches here, this is going to be empty to start out. What I want to do is I want to clear it every time I call uh, destroy pieces. So in destroy match, at the very, very end here, after I do all my swap back and everything, I'm going to say current matches dot clear uh, so that there's nothing left in there. So every time that we call this destroy matched function, which gets called every time that we refill the board, um, then we'll be clearing out any of those matches. So we'll take e we're taking each time on its own. So the next thing I want to do after that is I'm going to make myself a little helper method here uh, that's going to uh, add something to that array of current matches uh, if it's not already in there. And so I'm going to call this function add to array. And then I need to pass in a value I want to add. So I'll call this value and an array I want to add it to. Array to add. And this little function here is just going to add new values to an array if that value isn't already in the array. So I'm going to say if not array to add dot, I think it's contains. No, it's not contains. What is it? One second. Okay, sorry about that little break there. Uh, it's um, has, and we want to check to see if it doesn't have the value. Uh, then we're going to add it to that array. So we're going to say array to add dot append, and we want to append to it the value. So we're only adding a value to the array if the array doesn't already have that value. Um, all right, cool. So now when we are looking for our matches, when we find uh, pieces that are matched, what I also want to do is not just set them to be matched and then matched and dim. I also want to uh, add them to that array if they're not already in it. So I'm going to do that for both of these. I'm going to say add to array and I want to do I'm going to save these as vector twos so I'm just saving a position I don't necessarily need to save that exact piece so I'm going to do vector two um, ij and then so I'm not always passing in that array because for now I'm only using this method for um, I'm only going to use it for current matches for now. I might use it for something else later. I can see where this might come in handy. Uh, I'm going to overload this method. And that means I'm just going to set a default value for array to add. Um, we'll say array to add is equal to current matches. 
So that means that it's going to be current matches unless I tell it to be something else. So I only have to pass in the one argument here without um, causing any issues. So I'm going to do the same thing, add to array, vector to i plus 1j, and add to array. We can refactor this to make it a little simpler right now. It's a little, it's a little, um, we're using the same methods again and again, and an easier way to do that would be to look at some refactoring, but for now we're, we're fine. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing with my vertical matches. So I'm just going to grab these three lines here, and I copy those, oops, and I'm going to put them here as well, and I'm going to change it from being i plus 1j to being ij plus 1. And instead of being i minus 1j, it's going to be ij minus 1. Okay, and so I'm going to save this. And then, um, when I'm doing that destroy matched, just to make sure it's working, what I'm going to do is print, and I want to print out current matches, just so that I can see it. So let me go out of distraction-free mode here so I can see the output, and let's hit play and let's see if we're getting a list of our current matches right there all right cool so now let's actually do something with our list of current matches okay so back in our grid script here we're not just going to print out our list of our current matches but we're going to make another method to find if there's bombs on the board right now so i'm going to make this method right next to destroy matched Let's go into distraction-free mode here so we can see this better. Um, this is going to be a function that I'm just going to call find bombs. And this isn't going to take in any arguments, it's just going to find bombs on the entire board. So what I want to do is I want to first, I want to iterate over the current matches array. So I'm going to say for i in current matches dot size. And then what I want to do is I want to store the values for that, that current match. So store some values for this match. So first I'm going to create a variable that I'm going to call current column. And this is going to be equal to current matches i, so the current match that we're looking at, dot x, and then I'm going to do the same thing for the current row, so var current row is equal to current matches i dot y, and then I want to save the color of the current piece as well. So var current color is equal to, um, I want to go to all pieces, and I want to go to current column, current row, dot color. So I'm storing some values in there. Next, I'm going to iterate over the current matches. So I'm going to iterate again on the same array to check for column, row, and color. So I'm going over the, um, the same array to see if the column is the same, the row is the same, and the color is the same. So I'm going to say 4j in current matches.size. Um, I'm going to check to see, oh yeah, I also want to have a little variable here that tells me how many current matches I have. So I'm going to say var um, matched equals zero. So then in here, I'm going to say for j and current matches dot size, if um, current matches j dot x is equal to current column and current color is equal to, let's actually cache a value here really fast, we'll do var this color is equal to 
all let's actually cache all three of those variables here let's just make our life easier so let's say var this column is equal to current matches j dot x var this row current matches j dot y and var this color is all pieces current column current row dot color so then here I'm not needing to pass in this dot x I can just say this column current column that makes it a bit more readable so this column current column and then current color double equals this color then I'm gonna do matched plus equals one okay and then I'm gonna do the same thing if the rows match so if this row is equal to current row and this color is equal to current color then matched plus equals one and now we can actually do some stuff with this so after we go through um, after we go through uh, all of the other pieces in the array and compare them to our original piece so at the end of this for loop but before we go out of it um, we can give some information about whether or not there should be any bombs so we'll say um, if um, matched is equal to four then we can print something so we'll print column or row bomb and then we can say if actually let's do it this way I'm going to create one more variable here I swear I had notes but I wasn't following them and now I'm going to follow my notes again so I also want to create one more variable here not just for matched but I want to have two of them I want to have column matched and I want to have row matched I thought I was being more clever than I was in my prep and I could, uh, could get away from some of this but I can't so make this column matched and then we'll make this row matched or maybe I can but it would just take somebody more clever than I am so then um, here we're going to say if column matched is equal to four then we're going to print column bomb we're going to say if row matched is equal to four then we're going to print row bomb uh, if they're both equal to 3, then it's an adjacent bomb, so it's a T or an L. If call matched equals 3 and row matched equals 3, print adjacent bomb. And then last, if call matched equals 5 or row matched equals five print color bomb so those are the four different kinds of bombs column row adjacent and color and now in destroy matched uh, where I was calling the uh, or at least just printing what's in current matched I'm instead going to call find bombs there we go so now I'm gonna go out of distraction free mode here I'm gonna save everything and then let's uh, let's give it a try all right so uh, I don't have any special pieces or any special bomb pieces here right away so I'm gonna play until I would have a match of four or um, an L shape or a color match uh, it would be easier if I just made a little a little function here that allowed me to place pieces wherever I wanted them but I don't know Maybe I'm too lazy to do that, so I'm just going to play for a little bit here, and I'll fast-forward it if I need to. 
Okay, so here I could have a match of four with these orange ones. I could also have a match of four with these um, reddish purple ones. So we'll do the orange ones. All right, so we got Robom registered four times, but that's okay. Uh, that's because it registered once for every every piece that's in there. Um, if I were to just add a little return after my print statement, then I, I wouldn't get that because I'd, I'd already have a bomb. Um, but there we go. So I'm going to play a little bit and try to get a column bomb or an adjacent bomb or a color bomb. And that was really dumb because I could have had another row bomb right there. Um, so here's another row bomb. I got four more row bombs. Four more row bombs for that list of four right there. Um, yeah. Feel better if I could make sure that the column bomb and the adjacent bomb is working. So here's a column bomb situation right here. Cool, so I got four of those. And now I'm looking for an adjacent bomb or a colored bomb. So I'm probably gonna fast forward this again. Okay, so I can have a match of five here. Cool, so I got five color bombs. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. Um, next time, we're gonna talk about how we can make this actually create the bombs where there should be some. So. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. You can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. Uh, you can join my Discord, where I've been chatting pretty much every day. And yeah, uh, I hope everybody out there has themselves a wonderful day.